good morning and thank you for joining us uh, for this latest webinar in the Recovery Through Enterprise Business Festival. I'm very pleased to be joined this morning by Charlotte Marshall and Anna Maria Cast from the Recovery Through Enterprise Project, uh, here to have a chat about the Fast Track Jobs Match programme. Um, ladies, before we get into that in too much detail, though, I'll just throw to the two of you just to introduce yourself uh, uh, briefly before we crack on, if that's okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm Anna Maria Cast. I'm the Enterprise Officer here at East Northamptonshire Council. I joined in July um, in the midst of COVID and it's been a challenge all the way through, but it's been a good challenge. So um, I'm just grateful that um, we've been able to work this together as a team. I'm Lottie Marshall, um, working for Recovery Free Enterprise, mainly um, for Fast Track Job Match as well, and um, supporting local producers. Um, I joined in December, um, having only done two days in the store and then working remotely ever since. Um, my main sort of goal for us is just to get everything out virtually, um, so across all social media platforms and across the websites as well. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Um, now, obviously, we're here this morning to have a chat about the Fast Track, Fast Track Jobs Match programme, um, which has been uh, relatively recently introduced. I just wonder, Anna Maria, first, if you perhaps want to uh, just take a few minutes to explain the purpose of the project and the kind of activities that you guys have been doing. Yeah, so it's something that sort of came about in another county that it was tried and tested and it worked really well. It was bringing together... Um, them of jobs and um, apprenticeships. So I thought, well, okay. So when I moved to East North Hans, I thought well, it would be a really good idea if um, we could do the same thing here, same sort of model that would work. Um, so here we are, we've tried it and we've tested it and um, it's been working really well. What we decided to do was we, we brought it into um, the unit at Rushton Lakes, which obviously now at the moment, it, due to COVID, it's actually um, closed. So we are still operating virtually. However, it's basically supporting young people um, or anybody really with jobs, um, whether it might be a job, whether it be an apprenticeship, whether it might be um, upskilling, reskilling, all sorts. Um, the other thing we'll do is we'll obviously work with them with um, CV writing and interview skills. All this will be achieved by working with our partners. We have quite a few partners that work alongside us, okay. and for that we're very grateful for. Okay. And who are those organisations? Who are you guys kind of partnering up with to deliver this activity? So we have like we have the job centres, so uh, Department of Work and Pension. We have the University of Northamptonshire. We have building businesses, sorry, building business. Um, we also have a few of the um, training providers uh, across Wellingborough and Corby, Rushton. So they're, they're great. Um, alongside that, we just have um, the Federation of Small Businesses, to just to name a few. So, yeah, really, really great support throughout um, what we're doing, really. Okay. They, to be fair, they join us. They join us once a day at the unit at Rushton Lakes. So um, they take it in turn. So when somebody comes in, we work. If something that we, we, we do the initial sort of meet and greet. Um, and obviously, I think when they come in, they talk to somebody that, um, well, I suppose they come in through the door, we welcome them and we listen to what their needs are. So once we've done that, we then feel if there's extra support that needs to be given, that's when then we pass them on to our partners. If their partner isn't there, the relevant partner, then we will email them, um, but the young person will never leave without having something. There'll always be some collateral they'll take away with them, little goodie bags, you know, with our, with our notebooks and pens and things. So yeah, that's the sort of thing that we would normally do. Okay, so there's a tangible kind of call to action and, and, and a route forward for everybody that kind of comes and engages with you guys uh, via that process, is there? I yes. think so, yeah, and I think it's in terms of if people aren't sure where to start, then we're definitely people to contact and um, to put you in, in connection with, with the right, right service, right provider, 
Um, like I say, if it's CV writing, then you might want to go to some someone like Evolve, or you might want to go to the Mallow, depending on which area you're looking um, for support in. Um, and then likewise, if you if you need business support, then you've got Federation of Small Businesses, that kind of thing. So if you're not sure, then we're definitely the sort of first port of call to then point you in the right direction. Okay. And what are the common kind of gaps and, and needs that people are presenting? Certainly, perhaps in the in the first instance, if we if we talk about the the job seekers themselves uh, and the kind of support that people are looking for, but I guess. Perhaps wider than that, there'll be uh, requirements that the businesses have got in terms of being able to identify good quality candidates and, and find the right people to fill their jobs as well. But um, yeah, I just wonder what are the, what are the kind of the common themes and, and issues that you guys are coming across? Um, well, I'll say a few, and we've, we've spoken to so many different things. So people losing their job because of COVID or um, and need support. Um, people that just want to upskill and um, realizing that probably this is the time to upskill or reskill. Um, we've also, um, I had uh, four lads that were just sort of like the last year of, the, of, of studies and they decided that um, they needed part-time jobs. So these jobs are not just the ones that are based at Rushton Lakes. These are also jobs that are sort of in and around the, um, the local area. So lots of businesses that are just saying right okay there are some jobs out there um i know it's a very difficult time but um i would like to probably add the fact that obviously um just for us um we were lucky to um take on two two local ladies charlotte being one of them which i know that um, i'd love for her to share her story so charlotte being one of them and also another lady that we took on just before christmas They'd just been made redundant. So it was a great opportunity to take them on. Um, we was also lucky enough, we had enough work after Christmas that it warranted for us to take another person. She's okay. now still working with us and it's fantastic. She's supporting the towns. Um, the work that she's doing is supporting us with the towns for, um, for apps and all other, other work. So yes, the work is there. So it's been lots of varied um, uh, sort of, it's, it's varied opportunities that people can come in and ask for, but the, the business side of things as well is where businesses have either are struggling because of COVID or are struggling because that you know they just can't make ends meet, or it might be, believe it or not, even startups, some startups, and how do we go ahead? Who can we talk to? And that's when we sort of um, point them in the right direction to the University of Northamptonshire, which are giving great support also the Federation of Small Businesses, which have free, obviously with, because they joined the, with us, our partnership, there's free advice for them. So those are the sorts of things that are coming up. Mainly it's people that are sort of losing their jobs and young people that are going to be leaving sixth form and saying, actually, what's my next move? What can I do? And when they come through the door, they, are, they feel that they're in a real safe environment, which somebody that actually listens so we're there and we're not just, you know, they're not, it's not one, one, one shoe fits all. We make sure that we look at everything individually and, and sort of support them for the actual individual support they require. Okay. Okay. I think it's more of a relaxed approach in terms of it's not quite as perhaps military as, obviously we are collecting jobs from the job centre. Um, but it's not quite as a military process. It, we provide you with the information and then it's it kind of up to you guys what, what you decide to do with it. I mean, from me, my background, I'm actually a manager in leisure. Um, so it's quite different for me at the moment, um, but it, it has been very, very enjoyable and do intend to stick with it. Okay. Um, but it has opened up opportunities for me as well. Um, and I managed to get in with the job um, just by speaking to people. So I was going to ask you what your kind of journey looked like from the other side, I guess, in terms of going through this kind of uh, this program as a, someone looking for work and, and kind of seeing the other side of it. What that kind of journey looked like for you? I mean, I can completely relate to having those, those dreaded letters of you're at risk of redundancy. They're not the nicest thing to receive sure. by any means. Um, and it does kind of put you in sort of a state of panic where do you go what do you do because you think you are in secure employment and it's going to be for years ahead and then all of a sudden it's kind of taken from underneath you and you're you're worried then about 
how you're going to pay the mortgage or, or bills or whatever it might be. Sure. I can completely relate to that. Um, but actually, it, it is okay to speak to people um, and it is okay not to be okay. Um, there's loads and loads of people that you can speak to. I mean, I managed to, to jump in with this role by talking to somebody that actually works at Western Lake anyway. Okay. Um, and then they put me in contact with the right people. You get the right support. I mean, even myself, I've had my CV looked at as well, um, just to make sure that everything is kind of where it needs to be. So there, there is definitely support out there, no matter what level you're at. I mean, filling in, I've been on furlough as well, so first lockdown and second lockdown, um, both on furlough, but I like to keep busy, so um, I've been helping out local businesses as well, um, I mean, from doing some, some computer-based work to, um, yeah, computer-based work um, to working for a restaurant, I mean, not something that I would have maybe chosen, um, but it, they need support and then I'm free, so why not help them out? Has uh, going through that process as someone, you know, trying to find a new job, uh, did we, were you able to kind of pick up anything or, or perhaps notice any kind of improvements in the process and the system perhaps that maybe now you're on the other side of that uh, journey and are, and are kind of working um, on the kind of the project itself? Have you been able to kind of change or adapt anything based on your own experiences? I think massively, yeah. I think it's made me realise that you don't necessarily have to have everything that's written on the page for the job description. Okay. Um, you, if you've got skills that you've learned, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need the qualifications. Because um, some people are instantly put off by, oh, you need a degree in this, or you have to have that. Sure. Um, which automatically, we all do it. We skim through and go, oh, I'm not qualified enough to do that. Um, but actually, you can talk around the point, and if you've got the experience, nine times out of ten, if you can relate to that and you can put a scenario where you, you use those skills, um, then there's no reason why you can't apply and give it a go. As well, for interviews, it, even if you don't necessarily get the job, then you've had the interview experience, you get the feedback, and then you can try again. Okay. And tell me, what's the, the, the reaction been to the programme so far? Because I understand this is something you've been working on for, for kind of a little while and this is already kind of uh, underway and, and happening now. What's the reaction been to the, the project, both from the businesses that you are kind of working with and also from the, the, you know, the job seekers that you're engaging with day to day? Um, well, it's, it's been tremendous, I must say. Um, the phone phone doesn't stop ringing which is fantastic um i've had three phone calls just today um one one lady's just said that she's just seen the number and she's called and can i help her with a job she's she's going to be um losing her job we made redundant on 31st of march so um i've gone through a few things with her um and guided her through i then had another phone call which was her friend who works in the same place as her and said, um, I've just understand you're helping my friend, can you also help? So with that, I've just had three. So so where I'm coming with that, obviously the word of mouth yeah. has been amazing. And I think once somebody has that um, experience with somebody and they feel that they haven't been fobbed off and they've, um, you know, like I obviously try and support them in every way I can, they feel that, they can come back and they can actually refer you to their friends yeah. and they will come back because they felt that that was, you know, the way forward. Um, so just like I say, so just three were picked up today. Um, I think also the way that this has come about, we've, we've collaborated um, with um, not only our business partners, but also with the local towns I, we work very closely with the town councils, with the, the councillors. They really love the idea. Uh, they can also come and promote the towns at Rushton Lakes the, at the unit. So for them, it's great because they can come and promote that. So it's been great. Also working with our food, food produ producers. So all the local producers that are um, a bit small and need that little bit of sort of nurturing and you know, we're almost like a little incubator sure. where within within the the umbrella of men, so made in Northamptonshire, they can come and showcase their, their actual um, 
foods and their, and their produces. So that's the other little part of what we do. So supporting jobs, supporting people with that, supporting our businesses, but also supporting local producers. And the, the collaboration has been amazing with everybody. And I think anybody that we've spoken to have just said, what a wonderful idea. It's all under one umbrella of recovery through enterprise, but the fast track job match has just given that extra little element, which is, you know, it's a, it, not only employability support, but the business support and all the other resources that they can come in. It's all under one roof. Yeah. So, and I think that's been quite powerful. It's something that we would like to be able to use that model elsewhere in the county, which is what I'd love to do because I think it would be amazing for sure. the other counties to have. And, you know, just working, just working well, bringing, it's about bringing people together, whether it's ENC, the partners, the customers, the towns, all the working people within it. And the great thing is, it's just that when people come in, it's not just about them, it's no matter what age group they are. They sometimes, we've, I've had a case where it's, where it's like, I've also got my mother who's just lost her job. Can I send her in? Well, yeah, of course. So it's different generations that we're obviously supporting. Okay. And I think the importance of uh, partnership as well, because I think pre-lockdown pre and pre-COVID, everyone was very much competitive, whereas now we're encouraging people to work in partnership. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, they can they can cross pollinate with products. Um, they can have business support from potentially what was a competitor before. Yeah. Um, they can work together to actually achieve something. Okay. And on the subject of, of kind of achieving something, tell me, you know, six months from now, twelve months from now, when you guys sit to come and uh, come to sit down and assess, you know, what the the success of this program has been. How do you begin to judge what success looks like? Is it in terms of the businesses you've supported? Is it the number of jobs that you've you know helped match people into? Is it just you know knowing that you've made that difference to so many people's employability and, and you know their, their kind of lives for a period? You know, what does a success look like for you, ladies? I think just making sure that everyone's aware that of all of the partners and all of the, the advice and everyone that's, that's available to support it's not necessarily done on stats as such it's just making sure that people if they see the logo they go oh yeah i know i've seen about that i've read about it I, i've watched a webinar or a conference mm -hmm. um whatever it might be um it's i think it's definitely an awareness thing rather than done on stats okay yeah definitely and i i think when you go home of an evening and you just think to yourself, do you know what, I have actually placed that person or I've helped that person achieve that um, or I've passed so many um, people over to whoever it might be. It's just having that satisfaction that you've made that difference on that day, um, you know, and people aren't numbers. They are real people that sometimes need that extra support. Yeah. Um, it's it's great because the um, the the unit at the you know the the shop at Russian Lakes has got the suitability that if they come in and, and talk to us, um, if then we need to give them a bit, little bit more guidance, they can move over to a nice comfortable safe sort of desk and chair where they can talk to somebody on a one to one, um, because the support also goes a bit further than that it's they might just feel anxious about something or I've just they might just walk in and they've only just lost the job a couple of days ago so they're there to give all that added support as well um which is great I mean if somebody comes in and they are actually job ready um and they don't need any other support we we work straight away um their CV is then passed on to the job centre or the bank of employers that we may have that are actually looking to take on somebody. So if somebody is job ready, we could hopefully get somebody on board very, very quickly. Okay. Um, going back in the same as, as, as Charlotte and, and the other lady that was taken on. I mean, you know, within, I think it was within a couple of days, we put the ad in, they, they applied, we interviewed, and a week later they were both in post working which was great. I mean, Charlotte actually worked, started on the 27th. She did two days at Rushton Lakes with us, and then it was Christmas. And we had the Christmas celebrations. But 
you know, now we've come back and we can tell the story that we've now taken on an extra person. Sure. So for us, it is that. We had, um, our footfall was brilliant. We had up to 105 people a day walking in. Wow. It, it was, it grew gradually, but um, a couple of the best days were, were actually about 105 people were, were, were logged. Wow. So the footfall was starting to grow, which was great. Okay. What, I think um, also um, people like a bit of a distraction in a strange way. So you might not necessarily want to walk into an office block at a specific time, specific date, and have it very sort of you need your paperwork and you've got to have that. It's very relaxed. So if you want to, if you're not sure to start with, you could come in, you could have a little browse of the products that are there. Um, at which point you'll probably instigate a little bit of a conversation, and that's generally how it how it sort of rolls on, and you, we can then give you the advice. Um, like I say, it's not it's not something that's pressurised in any way, shape, or form. It's just sure. people there to sort of have a chat informally, um, and then it's up, up to you guys, um, sort of what what information um, you choose to take from that. Okay. The only thing we can't give them are hugs. If you give them virtual hugs. <laughs> There's a virtual hug and there's always that, you know, and, and obviously we can never, we can't really offer them um, any refreshments, but apart from that, we can offer them absolutely anything else. Sure. Okay. And what plans are there at the moment for potentially reopening the shop at some point in the future? Because obviously it's closed with lockdown as we sit here now, uh, kind of towards the end of February, but uh, is there plans for that to be back reopened again at some point this year? Yeah. Um, without jinxing it too much, um, <laughs> We are hoping, yes, absolutely. We are hoping to open sort of like early part of March. Okay. Um, so we're just in, 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 in talks at the moment, but we're looking at definitely opening our doors. So okay. we're looking at welcoming absolutely everybody, but that doesn't mean that now they can't, because they can still, they can still call us, they can still email us. There are numbers, obviously we're on um, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, they can go into a recovery for enterprise website so they can find us um, there's lots of posts going out every day um, Charlotte's doing a fantastic job with doing that so it's little things like that that obviously will help to promote and people can feel that they can come to us so I don't necessarily want I know it's only a couple of weeks away but I don't want people to just wait till the shop is open sure. if you need just pick up the phone just send us the email and we'll be there to, to do it but yes that is the plan and the plan is to just work um and support as many people as possible and hopefully if um we can open a few more in different counties okay excellent stuff well you've teed charlotte up perfectly there to perhaps uh, see us out today um by just giving us all the information where to find uh, more information on the project uh on linkedin facebook and, and the website and the phone number and stuff charlotte i don't know i know you've been working a lot in those areas uh perhaps have, you can share that yeah. information with us yeah, sure. So um, we've got the website, so www.recoveryfruitenterprise.co.uk. Um, we have got the business festival um, lineup on there as well. So all, all of the events, if you want to join in with any of those, then tap through the website for those. Uh, we've got Facebook, again, at Recovery Through Enterprise. Um, all the events will be going up there, anything job related, if it's related. Uh, we've got LinkedIn as well, um, again, at Recovery Through Enterprise. There's also a sub page off of that, which is a uh, fast track job match. So literally any jobs that, that we get things through or any jobs that you're aware of, um, they'll all be on there as well. Um, hopefully we're getting those through weekly now. So you should see some more popping up every now and again. Um, we've also got um, Twitter. Um, so we do try and tap in with Enterprising M on Twitter. Um, again, across channels on that one as well. Yes, I know Karen's been sharing a lot of stuff from the at underscore Nen Valley Twitter account as well, which is another place you can keep up with some of the information through the week as well. Perfect. Well, ladies, really appreciate your time in joining us this morning and, uh, and explaining a little bit more on the Fast Track Jobs Match programme. Um, any other final points from you before we, uh, before we wrap up this morning? I think for me, it's don't don't be worried about anything. We're not like um, we're not like the norm, as, as Charlotte said earlier. We we are so friendly. So it's 
by all means either pick up the phone or send us an email or once the, the, the shop is open come in and speak to us you've got nothing to lose but lots and lots to gain so yeah just come and come and say hello and at least the, the least you can do is walk away with one of us our nice um notepads books nice little goodie bag so yeah please if you need anything just get in contact that's all i'd ask okay thank and you I, I think as well um just if people aren't too sure about speaking to somebody directly or necessarily calling you can always message as well and that's not a problem until the point that you're ready to make a call or speak to somebody in person there is always that you can just drop a little message and um, if you want some information emailed over or you prefer to read it in your own time that's absolutely fine as well Perfect. Well, fingers crossed, moving forward from today then, that uh, you ladies are about to get even busier with a few more inquiries coming through day-to-day uh, -day as well, moving forward. Um, in the meantime, Anna-Maria, Charlotte, thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. Really appreciate your time. Have a great week out there in the meantime. Thank you very much, yeah.